up, party animals? My name is Kezi, and today is not a good day. I want to recap because this didn't start off uh, great either. So we pull into the venue sitting in line uh, as we normally do. Oftentimes, like at least every year since, I've just gotten out, put on my suit, and spun some poi. This security guard comes up to me and asks, hey, aren't you the one wearing the animal costume? And as I'm used to people being excited to see me, I'm like, yeah, of course, yeah, it's good to meet you. And they're like, yeah, last year you were evicted from premises for having drugs on you. You need to go to secondary inspection. We will not be letting you in otherwise. And my whole caravan is freaking out because they listed marijuana as a good reason to get evicted. Marijuana is legal in the state of Washington. You can buy it from a store. So we're all freaking out and it's all because some guy decided to come up to me and be like, hey, you came to the festival last year with a bunch of drugs. I don't do that. I don't go to the festivals with a bunch of shit on me because this, this whole fit and all it did was set our whole campsite up for just a really, really aggravating time. And one of the security cards, after we went to the secondary inspection, they said, hey, we're probably not gonna let you in with your fursuit because I just got out of a meeting and they're not going to allow that. Well, guess what? That was a lie too. So the whole security team just came up to me, said, hey, Kezi, fuck you. And then, and then just left because I don't know, they hate furries now, I guess, even though I'm making so many people happy, but whatever, because the funniest thing we said was, man, we got past that, we can get through anything. And so the pre-party started and it was awesome. And I went, I got in full suit. Unfortunately, it rained a bunch, but not before getting this beautiful photo of me standing under a double rainbow in front of the stage in my fursuit. You just can't beat that. So I guess some pretty pictures. Uh, my friend group ends up coming, coming through and it's right when uh, Ray Volp is playing laser beam and there's still some rain. So as the laser show is going, it's sparkling in the rain. It is absolutely insane to see. And like, so we come in, beautiful setting, beautiful night. Get back to camp, there's a silent disco going on, we meet up with some friends, and uh, that's that. We settle down for the night and get ready for day one, because uh, that was day zero. Nothing hadn't even started yet, people were still getting their campsites set up and all that fun stuff. So day one rolls around, we wake up, I get in my costume, because I didn't want a full suit day one. I wanted to just experience the festival without needing to carry this around, which is a hassle to be, to be sure. Sorry, I had to change camera angles midway through this. So everything's normal and uh, we go about our day going through the venue and just having our time. Uh, when all of a sudden our phones start blowing up with friends asking if we're okay. And confused, we're just like, well, yeah, we're, of course we're okay. We're at a music festival. We're better than okay. We're, you know, at the best place. And um, they're like, okay, good, we're glad you're safe because here is a news article saying there was a shooting in the campground earlier that day. And my first reaction is to ignore it because holy crap, am I not ready to mentally uh, handle that information that people died? Um, so I just go ahead and be like, okay, I'm not dead. Um, and none of the stages are showing, woo, 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 get down, cover. This is a big America moment. Get out of the way. Like none of that's happening. So I'm like, okay, things should be safe enough to just continue partying. Um, and we'll deal with whatever happens in the morning. Aside from the super suspicious text messages from friends, day one goes super well. Um, the music that played was amazing. Got to see Timmy Trumpet, who I've been wanting to see live since I was in high school. And it was all, all good vibes. Um, until the end of the night when we were really tired and I wanted to see KX5 and no one else did. So I just kind of watched KX5 and apparently no one else in the whole venue wanted to because the whole main stage was vacant. Like there's a giant hill going down to look at main stage 
and it was just empty, which was pretty wild. But I might have learned why, because part of campground was shut down, and there wasn't any really announcement to where or whose campsites were shut down. You just had to go there and find out for yourself. So we start heading back to camp a little bit early, but not like crazy early. So we start heading back to camp and we start hearing rumors that day two will be canceled. Now, none of these can be confirmed because people just said, oh, I saw it on the Jumbotron, or I got an email from Insomniac, or they asked staff or something like that. But no like official communication was posted. Nothing on Twitter, nothing on Instagram, nothing in the Insomniac app. So we had to play it by ear for the whole night to see, okay, do we need to plan for a day two tomorrow? Because if, if not, we should have fun tonight and because you know we're not gonna have to go to the we're not gonna be able to go into the festival grounds but we have to you know make sure we can at least get some sleep in case they do bring it up as the night progresses we start to learn that no these aren't just rumors they're going to shut down day two and man am i distraught and so are many people so i was able to cool off for a little while but i got back in my suit or i got in my first suit and uh, to try to cope with this myself um, I went full puppy and tried to walk around camp being a therapy dog to people uh, who were still up at, you know, the crack of dawn. Because anyone still awake after something like that is probably not handling uh, their emotions well. And I figured, hey, if they're still up, they might appreciate someone to talk to. And so me and my boyfriend ran out and uh, tried to help out whoever we could. And I feel like we tried to do some good. I think we were able to do some good. But as the night went on, it, we started getting more and more convinced, yeah, there will be no day two and there will be no official events. We didn't even know if like the pivot would be open and we could buy food because we didn't bring enough. We finally get back to camp and in the morning, uh, we realized that like half the campsite is gone. Half of the people that were there, probably more than, um, had just packed up and gone home. And we didn't want to go. Um, the The news said that the shooter had been removed from the scene, and I wasn't really, you know. And anyone who's still there are people who are the biggest party animals you'll ever meet. The people who truly believe down to their core, uh, plur as a mindset rather than just a word. And so we stayed behind, had the best time we possibly could with what was left. Uh, we ended up at some campsite that had a bouncy castle. That was fun. It was some girl's birthday and man, we felt so bad because what a birthday. But uh, she got to spend the rest, of the rest of the festival at camp and had probably one of the best turnouts for, uh, after, uh, for the campsite parties after the show. And so they had a great time. Um, and when nightfall came around, I ended up getting in suit and going to the pivot and having a crazy time spinning poi and even got handed some poi that like showed text and LEDs and words and it was insane. And so I was able to spin that, drew a crowd, I was in full suit and people were like, oh my god, that's so cool, holy crap. And hopefully I made some people's festival experience a little bit better uh, with my outfit because man, outside of everything else, that was the worst festival I've ever been to. And I think probably for a lot of others as well, because I, <laughs> I have not been doing well and I really wanted this festival to happen and was really excited for it. And the fact that it turned into such a failure was, has been hard to grasp with. It's why this video came out so late is because emotionally I am, I, I don't, I, I'm almost in denial that the event even ever occurred, that, you know, I'm still waiting to go to beyond. And it's, it's very hard to grapple with because, oof, life sucks right now. And I am um, trying to do my best at this point. So 
Um, I appreciate y'all staying with me and listening through my story. If you want to help the victims, uh, uh, the donation links that have been made public are listed in the description. So thank you guys so much. The meaning of Plur rolls through all of us on this, this dark time. But, you know, all of us came together and tried to make a best of a shitty situation. And I really think that that's what the whole community is about. And so, um... Hopefully I can spread that through the videos, and hopefully I can say something a little bit happier next week. But until then, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye!